There you guys, here we are. Back at Fenland Fisheries for part two. And uh, things are looking good. Got that rod out. Just got that out about four or five minutes ago. That's six wraps out diagonally to that corner tree. I've got this little beauty out just on the edge of this bush, just there, literally four foot from the bank. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna have a go from really close in tonight. You can't beat it. a good bite close in. Should be epic. Hopefully, I'll get it on camera if it's early morning. And I uh, just have one rod left to put back in now. So I'm back here. Same peg I was in in part one. So uh, I'm losing the light pretty fast. That's why I had to get the two rods in first. Look, I've got no house up, no nothing. It's all still in the van. I lit it all over the floor. Just thought I'd sort the three rods out first. But yeah, it's looking awesome. Things couldn't be better. I'm fishing tonight through my favourite moon phase, as you often hear me say. And the weather's going to be really warm tonight. It's going to be nine degrees tonight, and just we're only in early March. I think what's the date? So it's the 9th of March. Uh, maybe the 10th actually but either way we're in early March and uh, this spring weather couldn't be better I mean this time last year it was still minus one and here we are the same time this year 2017 and it's going to be nine degrees at night and 14 degrees tomorrow but uh, I can't stop around too long tomorrow so it's just a bit of an overnight I've got to be gone by about half 11 in the morning latest but uh, it looks really promising I've already dropped a bit of bait in on this rod. I should put 13 spoms. Uh, sorry, I keep saying spoms. I'm so used to fishing the spom at range at the minute. 13 mini spods. A little quarter one, a little puppy. So, uh, oh. Gosh. No, it's not focusing in <laughs> too close. But yeah, so I put uh, 13 of them bad boys out over the top. And. Uh, yeah, things are looking good. That one there, I just threw a bit in the edge. I just uh, watched a bit of foam come up to the surface and scattered a couple of little handfuls of uh, hemp and boilie over it. And uh, a bit, bit of maize in there actually as well. So uh, just this rod here. When I first arrived, before I'd done any of that, uh, there's two guys who are night fishing over there. They just make their bivvies out through the trees. So they're sort of fishing that zone, so that zone's out of bounds to me. So uh, I had a little lead about straight away and uh, I went round and spoke to the lads first, make sure I weren't going to cross no lines when I cast. And uh, they said it wouldn't be a problem if I put one rod out in the middle. So uh, that's what I've done, I had a little lead out there, I found a little spot that's just a little bit firmer than the rest and it's not covered in dead leaves and shit. So uh, that was the chosen spot and uh, clipped the spot up out there, spot sorry, and uh, I just put about 18 to 25 spots I lost count sort of around that but I put a lot more bait in the middle because it's featureless out there just trying to create a little bit of a feature I won't fill in the spots up a lot it's only a baby look and uh, it looks a lot lighter when I look the camera this way so uh, it's only a baby spot I was only three quarter filling them so it's not too much bait but it's enough to keep them picking around for, for a few hours at least I've got a good feeling about tonight after last week's epic session things are definitely looking good for this week but uh, for now, I'm going to have to go and get the house up and get the last rod in, and uh, I'll maybe give you an update later. I think it's going to be a bit of action tonight, quite early. So uh, both rods went out first time, so least disturbance possible, and uh, we shall see what happens. But for now, I'll speak to you then. Bang on bite time. So I thought I'd give you a quick update. Try and get a bit more good luck. Hopefully the rods will rip off on camera. The traps are still set from last night. It's quarter to eight in the morning. It's looking good. And it's going to be looking good until I go. Which, uh, Quite rare actually, the last two times I've been, it's been quite hot and sunny pretty early. So it looks incredibly good for a bite. 
fingers crossed, we'll get another bite. So, a uh, bit of an epic night's fishing really, considering uh, we're in early March and the fish are just about starting to wake up. <coughs> Just an epic early morning. So uh, I had to sort the rods back out and get them back on the spot. Which is one is out that way and one is out that way. You know from last week about that spot. And we have two fish. A very rare fish and a bigger fish. And I couldn't be happier about both. So uh Happy days, eh? I can't believe it. Uh, so basically the rare fish is in fact a ghost carp, I think. Uh, it's tough to tell because it's really dark, but it looked like the ghosty. If it is, I'm absolutely happy as Larry. There's a couple of ghosties in here, two ghosties, and uh, they've been in here for years, right from the beginning. Real old fish, they've seen it all. Uh, and this fish was playing like it was a 30 and uh, tried all the tricks, tried getting into the reeds and the, mar and the margins, everything and uh, in fact it's a bit of a revisit this, this one, a bit of an old friend I was fishing here probably six or seven years ago just on a day session and uh, a friend who I was with uh, actually caught this ghosty under the snags casting across from that end point island there to over there before it got made into one lake when it was two lakes and uh, that beat him up as well really beat him up and it beat me up uh, so yeah it's a really old fish like I say this fish could be 20 years old uh, not, a, not a giant fish because it's obviously <laughs> believe it or not it only looks about a pound bigger than it did seven years ago <laughs> That's crazy, it's just one of them fish that's not meant to be big. It's obviously a little male that's maxed out, but it's beautiful, looks good, old character. And then we have the other fish in the retainer, which come first. That one come at about quarter to five this morning, and the other one come about an hour behind it. And uh, that is a bigger fish, the one in the retainer. It's a mirror, and uh, it's definitely quite a bit bigger than the ghost carp. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how big that fish goes. It looked like a right little unit at night. So, uh, but yeah, so I sorted all the rods out and that. Had a couple of cups of tea. I've been out watching the water. Nothing's really happened this morning, to be honest. I've seen no signs of life, really. I've seen one or two little tail slaps, but they probably could have been small tench. Oh, it's just nice to just be out early March things are just starting to warm up a little bit and uh, the wildlife here is going mental six o'clock this morning every bird for a mile around us was chirping going mental and going about its business uh, it's nice so uh, obviously as I mentioned yesterday there's two people over there Let's zoom in one bivvy there, old matey. His name's Paul, he's been round. I went round and spoke to him yesterday when I got here, and he's just been round this morning. See what I had. And then uh, another bivvy there. And then there's another one just behind that tree with the white hat on on the island. And guess what? Okay, I know it seems like a. Uh, it might sound a bit like a broken record, but no one's caught anything apart from myself. So, uh, yeah. Happy days. Buzzing with that. Could have uh, two twenties in just uh, ten hours fishing. So it's worth getting back down here for part two. Things are really coming together. Uh, like I mentioned before, to stay consistent, you've got to be uh, ready to get about. There's no point staying on one lake all year. That lake might not fish through certain months. So what I do, I bounce around, I go with my instincts. You have, I have a little carp sense. 
and it just all of a sudden pings up and just like go to this lake go to this lake and this little demon in my ear don't go there don't go there you're gonna blank so I uh, I just go with my heart and go with my brain and uh, if I feel something's right and I feel like I could pinch a good fish out of it I go with it and uh, I did and uh, I've got a couple of 20s down there hopefully the ghosty might be just under 20 had a ghosty in part one so uh, yeah really made up really made up uh, couldn't be going better obviously I haven't been here for a long time still get to figure out the little lake it's a tricky little lake like I say them two over there still not had a bite and they got here before me and I'll mate you on the island he's been here for two nights he ain't had a bite either a little old me turns up just before dark last night and actually got the last rod out in the dark in fact and uh, managed to snare two bites uh, both tw twitchy bites actually in fact bit of a bit of a difference uh, from the old blue lagoon I'm getting some absolute rip-offs with uh, some of the fish in there uh, but here both bites were extremely twitchy I, I, I thought I couldn't work out what was going on and uh, but it just comes down to the rig on fishing and how they were trying to ditch it and they couldn't ditch it uh, so they're sort of just shaking about on the spot which is nice to know I even tricked them and to get that old ghosty they'll tell you in the shop here it don't come out often you know it's been known not to come out for a couple of years one of them two ghosties <coughs> and it gets pretty busy here in the summer most pegs will be taken on weekends so uh, things are looking up I'm going to have a quick bite we've got something cooking now and we're going to sort through these little bad boys and see uh, just how big that little ghosty goes and uh, I'll see you in a bit for a bit of recording ok guys it's not a uh this is the last one of this morning's action. It's not the ghosty I thought it was, in fact. There's two real, there's one real ghosty and one real coy looking fish in here. This is like a half ghost. Uh, looks ghosty from, the, from above, but not so much from the sides. It's got a real ghosty tail and a ghosty head. It's obviously. Uh, a half breed <laughs> or probably quarter by the looks of things. So there's nice little common. So sorry someone's just talking to me. So uh, yeah, lovely little common. Got a massive fish. But uh, look at the top of his head. It's very ghost like. Yeah, more than happy. Got a real good scrap as well, full of character. So, uh, happy days. I'm going to slip her back and then get part two of uh, the bigger mirror out. And we'll have a look. Oh, I'll save a bit of battery. Right, so uh, I'm going to get the uh, mirror now and we're going to see how big she goes, I just filled up my bucket of water got the scales this one's definitely going to need a weigh and uh, I'll be back shortly Bye She is a much heavier fish than that ghost common I just caught. Much heavier. Quick butcher. Uh. Oh, lovely fish. Proper chunk. Really nice chunk this is. Nice chunk. Going mental now. 
now. Absolutely ballistic. Just holding it down, making sure it stays out of harm's way. Nice fish though. Oh, chunk. Yes. Nice chunk this is. Quality. Right. Give it a quick way. I'm guessing mid 20. Guessing mid 20. We'll see. Twenty-five and a half. You will take an ounce or two. Looked a bit bigger than that, to be honest, but still, extremely happy. Right chunk, this is. <laughs> Didn't particularly fight hard. Uh, that ghost common fought a lot harder. I would have sworn that the ghost common was was a much bigger fish than this, but it's just to show you the masters, isn't they, of disguise. This one floated up like a bream at one point. Oh, what the hell is it? Is it a tench? Still uh, getting a bit mental. Just wait for it to calm down a minute. Bit of water goes on, get the foam off her. Just keeping her steady, keeping her in the cradle. Now it's time to lift her up. Ah, nice unit that is. Hey. Come on, baby, calm down. Got a spot of water on the camera now. What have you gone and done, eh, girl? Well, it's nowhere near as cold as it once was a few weeks ago. You can actually hold the fish comfortably now. Nice. Look at that. Early March 2017. And I'm getting off to a stonking year. Nice 25 and a half pounder. Real thick fish as well. It will hit 30 without a doubt, this fish. No question in my mind about that. Real chunk. Got a bit of length to it also. And, uh, yeah, extremely happy with this bad boy. Nice shoulders on it. Absolute mint. Still covered in leeches. Water's still pretty cold. Though it's come up a couple of degrees, it's still pretty cold. Flip over and have a look at the other side. So it looks pretty similar, but for some reason it just feels a bit heavier. There you go. Diamond fish. Diamond action for an overnighter. Only had 20 hours this week and uh, still got the rest of, well, still got about five hours left. The rods are all in position and the weather looks spot on. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm going to flip you guys off now. I'm going to get a couple of steel picks and slip this beauty back. Hi guys. Well, uh, I thought I'd give you a quick update. It's pretty much home time. I'll say goodbye. I've got about an hour left, so I'm going to have a little pack away now. Yeah, nothing else has happened since I've two fish this morning. It's about half twelve now. I'm already about half an hour late. So uh, I'm getting everything packed up and I'm going to get gone within the next 40 minutes. So uh, this will probably be the last time you see me for this, this part. And uh, I shall see you again for uh, part three at Fenland Fisheries. But uh, you never know because 
I have just put two zigs out actually, so you might get another update out of me. The middle rod and the right hand rod both got zigs out, one at five foot six inches and one at four foot six inches. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, if I don't speak to you uh, again, then I shall see you for part three at Fenland Fisheries. See you in a bit. Uh -huh.